my name is Brett. I'm a junior at Penn State studying environmental resource management. Uh, and today I'd like to talk to you about the four letters on the screen behind me. Uh, these are some pretty emotionally charged letters. Uh, I'm sure you've seen them, maybe with a Q or an I or an A attached, or maybe in a different order. Um, but it's a pretty common acronym for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. But I want to show you a way to write this acronym that you might not have seen before. Uh, so as you can see on this slide, there are some disparities between the letters. And I've used the size of each letter to indicate kind of uh, each group's voice within the community and the level of acceptance that's been bestowed upon the, each of these groups by the community. Uh, now when you hear LGBT, you probably think of maybe a skinny white boy with a lisp, somebody like me, perhaps. Um, but uh, obviously there are a lot of other groups that are represented by this acronym. Um, and these misconceptions and um, prejudices exist due to kind of a lack of education, uh, which causes some issues in the general community that can trickle down into the LGBT community uh, and create new issues and put up divides amongst its members. Uh, but before I get to issues like those, uh, I want to kind of give you a crash course um, about how the LGBT community fits into the context of the general community. So the first issue I want to touch on, uh, due to the high amounts of stress that LGBT people are usually under, especially those who are questioning their sexuality, uh, they often have higher rates of things like mental issue, eating disorders, uh, substance abuse, and there's also a, mis uh, a misconception that LGBT people no longer face direct acts of uh, hatred, and that's just not true. A study headed by our, uh, a Penn State professor, Sue Rankin, found that of LGBT people across colleges, college campuses across the nation, about a third of them felt uncomfortable, and some of them even felt unsafe. Um, there are some issues that bisexuals face uh, individually. Society has painted a very black and white view of sexuality. Uh, you can be gay or you can be straight, but there's no middle ground, uh, and that's not the case. This sexuality is a spectrum, so bisexuals are not confused they're not gatewaying into being full gay or full lesbian. Um, they're a legitimate sexuality, and they often face a lack of community because gays and straights alike um, don't accept them because of these reasons. And when we get, we get to transgender and gender variant issues, there's a, an overwhelming lack of education. Uh, and do, because of that, many people are just afraid to talk about these issues. Uh, if they're not afraid, they just don't know how. They don't have the proper language. So when so somebody finally does muster up the courage to talk about it, it's frankly a huge mess. Um, and these people are being marginalized because of that. Now here at Penn State, we have one of the most affirming atmospheres um, for a college campus for LGBT people, but there's some things that we could do better. Uh, I know personally when I came here as a freshman, um, I did not opt to have a random roommate because I was worried about ending up with somebody who is radically against homosexuals. Uh, so we have a very conservative housing policy here. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, co-ed rooms are the answer, but it's an issue that warrants consideration. Uh, and then there's things like unisex bathrooms. Um, we do have them, but you ha kind of have to hunt for them. They're on random floors of random buildings. Uh, so just little things like that can make a big difference. Uh, and now that I've touched on these kind of general issues, I want to talk about the issues that occur within the LGBT community. So because it's a microcosm of the community of a, as a whole, there's just as much racism and sexism within the LGBT community. Uh, and an example of one of the racist things I hear a lot, I will never date a black man, uh, it's just my personal preference. So let me compare this to something that actually is a personal preference. I'm a picky eater, and I hate asparagus. It doesn't matter what you do to the asparagus or how you present it to me, I want nothing to do with it. So if you replace the word asparagus with black man, that's what you sound like. No matter how the black man presents himself to me, no matter what his personality is like, I want nothing to do with him. And by dehumanizing someone to the level of a vegetable and only caring about their race, that by definition is racism. Uh, and then there's some issues of sexism that come up because the LGBT community challenges gender roles in a way that the general community may not. Uh, so you get issues like, within the gay community, an obsession with hypermasculinity, um, and then lesbians, bisexuals, transgenders, just not having their sexualities respected. The second issue um, is the hookup culture. Now, this is a Penn State-wide thing, but it affects uh, the LGBT community differently. Um, as a gay man, I can tell you that often uh, gay people are kind of starved for affection because we can't express this uh, as freely as heterosexuals can. Uh, so when we do run across each other in social circles, um, we see each other first as a potential hookup before we see each other as a friend or a kind of support network. Uh, and let me take a moment now to address things like Grindr. 
Uh, if you don't know what Grindr is, it's a social networking cell phone app uh, for gay men. You can create a profile, uh, find men around you down to the foot, and it's almost uh, always with the intent of having sexual relations. Um, as someone who's dabbled in Grindr, I can tell you that when society limits the spaces in which gay men can express their sexuality, uh, it becomes heightened in the little space that they do have. So places like Grindr uh, become a zoo, essentially. All bets are off. Um, and this isolates members of the community. And then the largest issue uh, is one specific to the gay community that I've experienced. There's a lot of tension between uh, the closeted and open members of the community. Um, the open members see the closeted members as having their cake and eating it too. Um, they can engage in these sexual relations, but afterwards they distance themselves and don't have to deal with uh, the negatives of being gay, like the harassment or the bullying. Uh, and then the closeted people see the open gays as fundamentally different. Um, if they, they think if they don't associate with those people or don't act like that, they won't have to be labeled as gay. Uh, and this is, as you can imagine, is creating a huge amount of tension. Um, so at Penn State, we have a really great group of resources. Um, we have the Commission for LGBT Equality that uh, av advises the president. Uh, we have the Resource Center that has books and texts on almost any subject you can imagine. Uh, we have discrete resources like the LGBT Support Network, which is a group of professors who are trained to help LGBT students, uh, and they have a little sticker on their door so you know that they're a part of the network. Um, there's so many other resources that I don't have time to mention, but unfortunately, uh, there are people who will never take advantage of these resources out of fear. So what can we do about such a deep-seated problem? Um, the courses that all students at Penn State are required to take are things like CAS 100 and English 202. Uh, they're all based on effective communication. But I'm not sure how we can communicate effectively uh, if we don't understand each other on so basic a level as our gender identities or our sexuality. Um, so what I'm proposing is a required class in this area. Um, now, what would a class like this look like? It could be part of the freshman seminar, it could count towards the GS, but what's more important are the benefits of such a class. Uh, by requiring it, there won't be any insecurity uh, about people asking stupid questions or not wanting to join for fear of being outed. Um, and it wouldn't just be, you know, a feel-good class to learn about LGBT people. Um, it's a class to help people express, learn how to express their sexuality and learn about their gen gender identity, which I think, frankly, is something that heterosexuals and homosexuals alike uh, struggle to do. So the issues I've described have kind of paralyzed our ability to communicate with each other. Um, if we're not graduating Penn State as people who uh, are well-spoken and can support each other and can communicate effectively, um, then I think that we're failing as an institution, um, and it's kind of unacceptable. Uh, and I think that if we start now and consider issues such as these um, and consider some of the pro proposed solutions, uh, we can do better in the future. So thank you.